Residents on Fraser Island have spent the night defending their homes as a dangerous bushfire burns out of control. A 737 water bomber capable of dumping 15,000 litres in seconds has now joined more than a dozen aircraft battling this inferno, which is threatening the township of Happy Valley. It was sparked by an illegal campfire over seven weeks ago and the blaze has now burnt half the island. Crews are hoping for a wind change or some rain, but a thunderstorm expected today could make conditions even worse. For more, we are joined by Queensland Fire and Emergency Services State Coordinator Brian Cox and Fraser Coast Mayor George Seymour. Morning to you both, gents. Now, Brian, um, first to you, firefighters can't fight this from the ground because uh, the fire trails are, are all overgrown and, and we saw this happen in, in New South Wales last summer um, because of the National Park. So they're fighting it from the air. Uh, how difficult is this for firefighters? This has been burning for almost eight weeks. Yes, that's correct, Sam. Look, it is uh, extremely difficult conditions there on the ground. We do have to attack it from the air and the ground in combination. Yesterday, around one o'clock, we saw the combination of the teams doing fire breaks just north of Happy Valley Township. And then, as you saw the footage, you know, the large air tank and tankers came in and also hit that just to the north of the town. That effectively got the fire to go around the township just after uh, around one or two o'clock yesterday. But then it hit Yindi Rocks around about four o'clock, which is just south of Happy Valley. That again was defended by firefighters in a combination of water bombing and ground crews fighting the fire on the ground and inside the township that saved that settlement as well. And the last reports we've got uh, before they closed uh, operations at midnight last night was that the fire was around about 400 metres away from the Oaks, which is about, about a kilometre, kilometre and a half just north of the Happy Valley Township. Yeah, they're extraordinary, these pilots, aren't they? We say this every summer. Um, Brian, thunderstorms are forecast today. Uh, is that, well, good and bad, I guess. Hopefully it brings some rain yes. for you, but also could bring some lightning, which might create new fires on the island. Yeah, we'd prefer no lightning and just more rain, um, but that's not always, hope's not always a plan. But look, last night we did receive some rain. Uh, the ground crews are out there this morning as we speak looking at that. We don't know what the fire situation is because of that rain. We are prepared for more lightning strikes, absolutely. And we've got about 90 personnel on the island ready to deal with that. We're also going to allocate around about another 19 aircraft in that vicinity today, which includes those two large air tankers that are on standby. We're hoping to have even flight operations ready to go by 7 o'clock this morning. OK, you're amazing, Brian. Good on you. Um, George, you've been travelling back and forth from Fraser Island. Uh, you're talking to residents in the thick of it. Why? This has been burning, I say, for, for almost eight weeks. Why not just get these residents out? And have you evacuated Kingfisher Bay now? Um, yeah, Kingfisher, Kingfisher Bay is largely evacuated. But um, yesterday, those residents, the firefighters and the rangers, did an extraordinary job. Yesterday, the 7th of December, will long be remembered as the day that Happy Valley was saved through the combined effort of those men and women. Um, at about midday, the town would have been overrun and engulfed if it hadn't been for their preparation and their hard work. So I can't speak highly enough of the firefighters, the rangers, the Butchel Aboriginal Corporation rangers, and the residents of Happy Valley who saved their township yesterday. George, there's been a lot of anger over the management of the fire from locals. And, and you know, I'm a well-known critic, um, back to George here, of, of the national parks and how they sometimes manage these areas. This is a world heritage site, and it's been on fire now for, for eight weeks. Uh, could possibly be destroyed. There's, you know, wildlife, there's vegetation. This is such a sad situation, possibly could have been avoided. Oh, that's right. There will have to be a very full and thorough review, looking at every single day of this fire going back almost two months. Clearly something has gone very, very wrong, that you could have a fire that was monitored, 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 and then essentially the next day considered too large to put out mm. without rain. And then we haven't got the rain until about midnight last night. We're getting the reports back now from the island, from residents and rangers and firefighters, and um, I'm really hopeful that, and, and there's a lot of fingers crossed, that the rain last night was the rain that we've been looking forward to for almost eight weeks. Yeah, good on you for saying that, George. It's extraordinary that this has been let happen. Um, Brian, what's your your response to I mean you, your crews are on the ground there and, and in the air and you know what, what's your response to to that management yeah look we, we welcome the review uh, any review from my perspective is is healthy and we need to learn lessons from such an event like this yeah
As it, I, I would have hoped we might have learnt the lessons of last summer, perhaps. But um, <laughs> Brian, we wish you all the best. Thank you for all the wonderful work you do, and thank we you. wish your crews all the best too. George, stay in touch. Let us know how it's yeah. going. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Thank you.